you all like once again as this sets a benchmark for the industry with more electronics and safety displays and different aftermarket parts that visitors can buy. Wosi and Woses is once again staking its claim as the main electronics and safety event in the country today. And to attest to this claim, we've invited some of the country's most prominent figures in the field of information and communication technology to speak for us. Our first guest speaker is one who expanded the social media presence of the Build, Build, Build program. Now, this is something that's quite close to my heart because I was a witness to this. I had a front row seat to this. I saw how this lady put together a communication plan that I'd never seen before in government. It really brought people in, it engaged them. It didn't also just showcase what the government was doing. It got people to get behind it and understand it. And for that alone, it was quite an amazing feat. Now, She's also done some tremendous progress in key infrastructure progress in 81 different provinces. She also implemented policies as well, reforms and communication strategies consistent with the six-year Build, Build, Build roadmap. And in 2019, rightfully so, and very fittingly, she was awarded Women of Style and Substance from Stargate People Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my friend and our guest speaker today, Ms. Anna May Yu Lamantilio. was effective because James was part of it. <laughs> so, um, build, build, build. we were um, visiting one infrastructure after the other. A pleasant day to all of you. Foremost, I would like to thank the World Bank Service International for organizing this event and for inviting me as the guest speaker for this year's World of Consumer Electronics Expo and World of Safety and Security Expo. Digitalization has provided new and greater opportunities for growth and development. In fact, the United Nations said that emerging digital technologies can provide opportunities to bridge the rural-urban divide. It is also said that overcoming the digital divide is key to achieving the sustainable development goals. This is how vital technology is in this day and age. The Philippines gears up to be a digital nation. Our aim is to be a prosperous middle-class society by 2040, and we aspire to be a globally competitive knowledge economy. To build the foundation for a knowledge economy, the national priorities include the promotion and acceleration of technology adoption and stimulation of innovation in all economic sectors. In the 2022 Network Readiness Index, which was released by the Portulans Institute, a Washington, D.C. board think tank, the Philippines ranked 71st out of 131 economies. This is a great leap from the previous year's ranking of 85th. However, much needs to be done in the area of technological improvement. We are still among the logging countries in the ASEAN, placing 6th among the 8 nations included in the survey. But the fact that the Philippines was the biggest mover in the said index is already an indication of our progress. And this event that we have today gives us much hope that our country can really move forward aggressively in our digital transformation journey. This convergence of industry leaders, startups, and associations in the field of innovation and security is even more relevant now. These innovations, as well as the fruitful engagements and exchange of knowledge and ideas that will be generated through this platform, are all crucial for us to be a digital nation. Rest assured that the government continuously supports the growth of these industries and strives to create a conducive business environment for all. The Department of Information and Communications Technology as a primary agency tasked to develop and promote the use of ICT in the country is creating and implementing both mid-term and long-term plans for digital transformation across government sectors to improve interoperability and collaboration across the government and ecosystems. 
we are encouraging public participation online and open governance, fostering good governance innovation with the use of data-driven perspectives in the whole of government. Improving business innovation by establishing efforts on technology adoption in the business sector in the local government unit and the national level and taking advantage of emerging and advanced technologies related to innovations. The DICT is doubling efforts to provide mobile and internet services to the most remote parts of the country, aggressively implementing key programs such as the Broadband Damasa program, which provides free Wi-Fi sites in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. The Luzon Bypass Infrastructure, which will increase total government capacity from 40,000 MBPS to 2 million MBPS in the next six years, and the establishment of the National Government Data Center. The government has launched the eGov app, a platform that aggregates various government services into a unified online system to enhance public service delivery. The DICT has also started with the Integrated Local Government System, ILGU, in partnership with the DILG to implement an end-to-end -end business registration with LGUs for business permits, clearances, real property tax, business tax, civil registry, and other permits. This will improve the long lines in the city and municipal halls and streamline citizens' transactions with LGUs. There are around 906 LGUs that will already implement the Integrated Business Permit and Licensing System, or the IBPLS. The DICT has also started the Startup Grant, of, the Startup Grant Fund application process as provided under Section 11 of RA 11337 of the Innovation Startup Act. Through the SGF, the DICT aims to provide financial grants to, for new and early stage startups relating to startup development, capacity building, and network building. It is targeted to specifically help and nurture startups by providing pre-seed to seed funding that shall make the ecosystem be more active and investable. We are full blast in this, tran in this, in this digital transformation journey as ICT systems have become crucial in more aspects of people's lives and economy, President Ferdinand Marcos and Secretary Ivan Uy has been emphasizing the need for universal connectivity to ensure that no citizen is left behind. A fully digital government that is sensitive to the people's needs and enabling a conducive environment for the digital economy. The post-pandemic era is one that is highly digital. And in our digital transformation journey, a whole-of-nation approach is necessary. Thus, everyone's involvement and cooperation is crucial. Our gathering for today in the next few days of the 2023 World of Consumer Electronics Expo and World of Safety and Security Expo is proof of a vibrant innovation industry that can support our nation's digital journey and keep up with global demands. Let us make this event a very fruitful platform to gain new insights, exchange best practices, and form partnerships that will bring us all together towards becoming a highly competitive digital nation. Again, thank you very much for having me. Thank you too, Ms. Anime Yu Lamantilio. Thank you very much. Some insightful words there. And of course, why not? Why can't the Philippines be the leader in digital transformation? We've got as good a chance as any. Now, right now, our next guest speaker,